Today, let's talk about loudspeaker types and what's different between an electrostat and a ribbon speaker. These are great questions, and they come from Galen in Douglasville, Georgia. Hey, is there a difference between ribbon speakers, such as magnaplaners, and electrostatics? You bet your sweet bippy there is. And let me try and explain to you the difference. You, you might think of um, the planar or the panel speakers as being the same, because let's face it, uh, some electrostats, acoustats uh, in particular, look very much like a magnaplaner. And magnaplaners, acoustats, they uh, look like you know, Chinese room dividers, maybe. I mean, these are tall, thin frames with grill cloth over them. And they boast about different technology. But what does that really mean? How different is this technology? And, and how would we know the difference? One of the ways that we know is there are some brands, like Martin Logan's, who go to great trouble to show you the difference because you can see through the speakers. There's a thin, you know, plastic screen, and they actually even round those. That used to be one of Gail Sanders, the, the guy who started Martin Logan. Uh, that used to be one of his big things, that they had this nice round thing that gave you a bit better dispersion characteristics than the typical flat electrostatic speaker. So let's go to basics. There are ribbon speakers. There are planar speakers, there are electrostatic speakers, there are dynamic speakers, and then there's plasma speakers, there's all kinds. But let's, we'll focus our, our, our activities today on the difference between planars and electrostats. An electrostat is a speaker without magnets. And other than a plasma speaker, which are very rare, or the Hill pla like the Hill Plasmatronic, uh, which, which we're not going to get into today. Electrostats are about the only speaker I can think of that don't have magnets. So ribbon speakers have magnets, dynamic speakers have magnets, planar speakers have magnets, but an electrostat does not. So an electrostat is essentially a, well, I want to say, there's two fly swatters. They're called uh, statters, if I remember correctly. But there, there is um, a, a mesh, a metal mesh in front of the speaker and a metal mesh behind the, 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 the membrane, if you will. And then in the middle, sandwiched between that, is typically a piece of mylar or some kind of plastic material where you have uh, often embedded very fine wires inside of it. And I, I have seen designs where you don't have to do that, but uh, I, I think pretty much they all have these, these, this grid of wires. And what happens is you put a very high voltage into an electrostatic loudspeaker. They always have step-up transformers. So and when, you, when your power amp goes into an electrostatic speaker, uh, you may have noticed that there is a plug coming out of that speaker that plugs into the wall. Well, that plug is generating, has a power supply, and it generates a very high voltage. And your power amplifier that goes into the electrostatic connects into a transformer. And the transformer on, has this very high voltage so that when you actually deliver your audio signal through your power amp into the electrostat, it produces you know, a very uh, high voltage version of the output of your amplifier. This very high voltage is the repelling and the attracting force in the same way that if you get a static charge uh, on, your, on a balloon, let's say you take a, a static charge on a balloon and you hold it next to your hair, what happens? Brink! It just, your hair goes, bam, is attracted right to the balloon. Well, that's the same effect that an electrostatic speaker has, and that is what moves that diaphragm ever so slightly, and that's why they're usually pretty big. That's what moves that diaphragm back and forth between the, the, uh, the grids uh, on, on the, uh, the statters on the front. So it's an electrostatic force 
similar to what we, we find with a balloon attracting hair that moves the diaphragm. So there are no magnets inside of an electrostat. We can talk about their advantages and disadvantages. They're very quick. Because there's no magnetic fields, there's very little in the way of weight and, and magnets, so they're very, very quick. They're typically also what we would call head in a vice speaker, um, which is very typical. If you go to uh, a local guy here named Roger Sanders, produces electrostatic speakers out of Evergreen, Colorado. Gorgeous sounding products, but when you see Roger Sanders and showing the electrostats, at a show, instead of you know the usual setup where you got three or four seats uh, and then rows back to listen, he's got one row right in the center, and there's like four or five seats. And when you go to listen to those, you sit right in the center, and that's how it sounds great. And there, it sounds terrific. It's they are rather breathtaking in their clarity. They're just not all that practical, and they rarely have bass, which is why you see many speakers like Martin Logan's with built-in subwoofers to augment the bottom end that electrostatic speakers don't have. So they use electrostatic principles. A planar speaker does use magnets, and it has a similar design of a sheet of mylar, but that mylar has actually a voice coil, a very thin uh, laminated uh, piece of, of copper that goes up and down in a spiral and creates a magnetic field when you put current through it. So your, amp so your amplifier is actually connected to the copper, the strips of copper that are laminated onto this mylar uh, material. And then in front of the mylar material, uh, like in, in my speaker, I've got bars of magnets that attract and repel the magnetic field generated by the copper traces on the, the, the mylar. And that uh, is, is what you would call a planar speaker. It's got strips of magnets in front of it and a, uh, a, a sheet of, of mylar or plastic with strips of copper that uh, repel and attract and move air back and forth. And that is what we would call a planar loudspeaker. Hope that wasn't too confusing and I hope I answered your question. We will talk tomorrow. Thanks. Bye-bye.